Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Gonzaga Nation podcast. We got a mailbag episode to get to where you guys, the fans, get to ask Dan Dickow the questions that are on your mind. Dan, we got a bunch of them this week, so if you don't mind, we're just going to hop straight into it. We've dabbled a little bit in the transfer, or we've done a lot of bit in the transfer portal, but dabbled a little bit in recruiting. A lot of people want to know an update. How's the health of Gonzaga recruiting, both you know, domestic here, portals, high schools, all that kind of stuff, but also abroad? Well, we'll start abroad, and everybody knows Tommy Lloyd was kind of the spearhead with a lot of the international recruiting uh, over the last 20 years before he went to Arizona. He got you know Mario Kassoon, he got Roni Turioff, Shemek Karnowski, uh, just to name a few of Rui Hachimura. Um, but you know what? A lot of people thought Gonzaga's international recruiting and their ties were going to be gone when he left. That wasn't the case. Alex Tui from Australia, he is now uh, going to be a freshman at Gonzaga. Um, you've got the the young South Korean, uh, June, I believe is his name. I apologize. I'm still learning the pronunciation of his last name. I'll get it right before the KHQ broadcasts next season. Um, they, they, they locked in a commitment there with him as well. So, um, you know, I think Gonzaga is still going to be active internationally, but they're going to be selective. If you look at Arizona and Tommy Lloyd's roster right now, it's kind of 50, 50 international and U S born players. I don't think Gonzaga is going to, to be at that point, but they will be selective and they'll go after the right guys when it's necessary in regards to, uh, U S recruiting, um, you know, so many players or so many schools, excuse me, are, have been focused on the transfer portal while they're keeping another eye on, on the high school ranks with the spring eval periods. Now you got in the month of June, you've got your section seven on the West Coast. The Washington Coaches Association will be running a similar event the weekend after. So uh, focus will turn now uh, to those high school kids, um, because if if there's a few options left in the portal, but it, it's going to be quick to kind of, you know, fill those roster spots out. Um, but they're going to really start focusing on the high school group. You know, uh, they, they've got some offers out there at this moment in time, some West Coast guys. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see uh, if and when some of those young players commit. Changing up from basketball, Dan, we had a couple of people writing in wanting to know some of your favorite places. So let's talk about favorite place in Spokane to grab a beer that is not Jack and Dan's. You have established well that it is show can <laughs> that, that is the jam right now. But you know, let's go one past that, please. Is there another place in Spokane to get a beer than Jack and Dan's? I don't know. Uh <laughs> you by Jack and Dan's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Jack and Dan's, JC, can we get this uh this segment sponsored? We're gonna have to clip this and send it to them. But uh, you know, Jack and Dan's is the clear favorite. Um, but I live on the north side of town. Um, you know, I don't get a chance to go out and just grab a beer with friends or or, or family to do different things. But there's a, a lot of good places on that north side, you know, McLean's Pizza. Um, you know, there's a couple of good sushi spots that if, if you want, you can get a beer with the sushi. Um, you know, the, uh, some Thai places up on the north side. I used to be a member at Kalispell Golf Club. I got too busy to, to, to justify being a member there, but they got some tremendous restaurants at the golf course up there. Uh, and you could always count on a cold beer or a drink at the turn. That's for sure. How about the best game time food at the McCarthy Center, Dan? You know what? I can't give you an answer on that one. The reason why is because uh, in the media room where we do our pre-production meetings with Greg Heister, Richard Fox, and then our producer, Chauncey Jones, there's food in the media room. So I never go up to the concourse level. And, and so I could not tell you what the best option food wise is at the McCarthy Athletic Center. I would argue that you, that probably is an answer in and of itself is the best food is to have media credential access and have it catered for you. Yeah, that helps. I mean, yeah, in the media, the food there's, there's, food. there's some food. Oh, yes. And then there's also, you know, some of the, uh, the, the higher level donors, boosters, I believe it's called the Herrick room. Uh, occasionally I'll step in there and, and get a quick bite to eat, but um, you know, any time that I've had food at the McCarthy Athletic Center, um, I will say this, Gonzaga Athletics does it right and gets it set up right. Whether you're a paying customer in the concourse, a booster in one of the alumni rooms or in the media room. Gonzaga has had a bunch of success. I mean, obviously, you know that. I it, It's sort of, I have to say it to set up the question. Um, it, it goes unspoken here on this podcast, though, that they have had tons of it. 
but we had some fans writing in wanting to know, are they is, is Gonzaga the greatest mid-major Cinderella in NCAA history at this point? Oh, without a doubt. It might be the greatest story in, in college athletics, to, to tell you the truth. I mean, the fact that um, it rose from obscurity. Many people thought it was a, a one NCAA tournament appearance, and then it would go back to kind of uh, just be in nobody's interest to then they go to another Sweet 16, then another Sweet 16, and build all the way to be to the point where – you're honestly mentioning them the, them with the likes of Michigan State, Duke, North Carolina, Villanova, uh, those type of schools, Indiana, UCLA. You know, the only thing that separates those teams with Gonzaga at this moment in time is a national title. I mean, outside of that, Gonzaga checks every single box. Uh, and when you when you think about it, um, when when faced with the odds. Uh, it becomes an even bigger story. I, th- I think at some point when Gonzaga wins a national title, people are going to, you know, really take a step back and look and like, how did this happen? There's no way that this 23, 24 year run should have ever happened. When, when you look at all things kind of that, that have come together um, uh, to make Gonzaga what it is. It's an absolutely unbelievable story. Uh, I can't think of another story athletically um, quickly that maybe kind of matches what Gonzaga has done in the college basketball world. Yeah, there certainly have been some other teams that will come for three, five, whatever it is, years, make a great story, be a great, you know, small Cinderella, but nothing close to 20 years. Nothing, nothing. nothing Yeah, I mean, you look at Tulsa. Tulsa made a couple back-to-back Sweet 16s. Well, Bill Self was the coach at that point. You look at uh, Valparaiso when Bryce Drew hit, hit that shot, you know, uh, in the NCAA tournament. You look at uh, a, of, a like bunch of those schools, games. they'll get a one or two game run in a tournament for maybe back to back years. And it's amazing. Gonzaga, the longevity has been crazy. You look at Florida Atlantic, they did an amazing run last year, right? They got all, they have all their players back. Uh, amazingly enough, they didn't lose, lose a single trans- player to the transfer portal. Let's see what they do next year. I'm pulling for them. I hope they they have a successful year, but I think it'll be interesting. You're, to you're see, asking like, what are they going to see? Let's see what they do next year, not let's hedge the bet and see what they do in 25 years. Yeah, so yeah, yes. it's, it's absolutely amazing. Last question that we got for you before we'll let you go, Dan. We talk a lot about recruiting and transfers and players and NBA drafts and all that. So I'm curious, and the fans are curious for you as well, what is your singular favorite like characteristic that you look for in a player if you're kind of just doing the whole like eye test thing? Well, for me, my eye gravitates towards a couple of things. You got to be able to shoot it. I think, you know, if you're slightly challenged size wise or athletically, your shooting ability can can shrink that gap or allow you to kind of, uh, you know, be a better player. Uh, I think the other thing that goes along with that uh, are your skills with the basketball in hand. Your, I call it your ball handling. It's your dribbling and your passing. I think they combine because if you can handle it, get to where you want on the floor, uh, you've got an advantage both individually as well as, as a team. Uh, and then if the passing side of the ball handling, if you can't pass the ball on time on, on target, your shooting ability uh, is limited. It's minimized. Uh, and then the other fo- thing that I always focus and gravitate towards is footwork. You know, is their footwork uh, properly set up? Is there a good cadence to it? Is it allowing them to create space? Is it slow where they pass up or lose an opportunity to get a shot or a driving angle because their footwork uh, is slightly behind? So those are things that I look at. I know other people look at uh, are, are more focused on athleticism or size or defensive ability or rebounding. But, you know, I've always kind of skewed to the fact that players as they become fans or players as they become coaches gravitate towards what allowed them to be successful. And for me, it was shooting and ball handling and passing. Dan, thank you very much for answering these questions this week. We always Open up the mailbag every single week to your questions. You can hit Dan up on social. You can hit Gonzaga Nation up on social. There's plenty of different ways to get access to them. Thank you very much, Dan. Make sure you subscribe to Gonzaga Nation wherever you guys get your podcasts. Talk to you soon.